Hey everybody, Jason back again. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a couple of really cool neck knives and talk about how and why I bother to carry neck knives. Not all the time, but sometimes, and we'll dive right into it. Let's go ahead and head down to the table and we'll start talking about a couple of neck knives that I like and have and wear on an occasional basis, but always have handy for myself. All right, let's go down to the table. Okay, so here's the two neck knives. Uh, one that I've had for probably a couple of years now. Uh, it's been my go-to, it's been my favorite, it's been the only one that I've had. And it is this guy, the CRKT Minimalist uh, with the Warren Cliff uh, shaped blade. It comes with multiple different uh, sh blade shapes, uh, options for you. But, uh, the Warren Cliff itself here for its specs, you got a two inch blade, you've got oh, at 1.1 ounces for the actual knife itself and I think it's half an ounce for the sheath by itself. Overall length of uh, five inches, which does not count for, let me see if I can get this guy here for you, does not account for the lanyard, no. That's your five inches right where right where the back end of it is. So it does it does come with this nice little cool lanyard, you know, extra pull tab style, whatever. Um, it has jimping across the top here, which is is very nice, and uh, it's it's fiber resin handle, which is pretty much for the most part what my car is. They don't call it micarta they just they say they advertise it as fiber resin uh, composite material and then you got your little lanyard so very nice blade he gets used I carry him every once in a while he's always kept in the car he's I always keep him in the car and I always take him on uh, camping trips occasionally backpacking trips but uh, he's an awesome little knife awesome little blade all these finger grooves even though I know a lot of people um, feel that finger grooves limit you in hand size wise. Some feel comfortable, some don't feel comfortable. Uh, this guy is actually, I would say, for the most part, really comfortable. And anybody I've let borrow it, uh, use it, people with different hand size, um, they don't complain about it. They, they like it. As far as I know, everybody pretty much likes it. This is a very solid option from CRKT. The, uh, the blade steel is 5CR15 MOV, so it's a very budget steel. That's how kind of how CRKT is, and and uh, it's very affordable at around twenty three dollars. Um, is roughly what you, what you're going to pay for it, give or take a handful of dollars. So under thirty bucks, pretty much. Solid little neck knife. Again, 1.1 ounces to 1, 1.6 ounces, I guess, all together. They normally come, both of these knives, I'll talk about the real steel here in a second. Uh, these guys normally come with your uh, beaded chain uh, type neck lanyard. I don't care for those. They get replaced instantly. I pretty much just discard them because I don't care for that type of uh, chain around my neck. Amazingly for us guys, we have to worry about uh, those little beaded bits, you know, pinching hairs on our around our neck and and whatnot. And so they're to me they're just not comfortable. So to each their own. I did away with them, and what I put on these guys instead is some uh, SpectraCord. If you don't know what SpectraCord is, look it up. It's uh, it's much it has much nicer properties from uh, then paracord. It's a smaller. You can get a smaller diameter that has much, much more strength to it. It's a whole lot more durable to elements, uh, to wear and tear. It doesn't have all those little tiny strands that you can then take it apart and use as fire starting stuff and all that kind of jazz that uh, that paracord claims to you know claims to fame with. But uh, but it's it's 
got some awesome properties to it. It doesn't stretch like paracord does for one thing. Not so much, a, you know, a big deal with something like a, a uh, lanyard for um, a necklace or, or lanyard for um, for neck knives, but it's still, it's, it's really nice stuff in it, and I like that stuff. I use it for uh, just about everything now instead of paracord. I've kind of gone away from paracord for all the properties that the Spectra cord has. And then on the ends of them, they, these are your um, Keysmart um, three pound pulled magnets. Yeah, three pounds of, of, of holding power, which is quite a bit, especially for something that weighs, you know, less than two ounces. And, uh, and I just like the fact that it's a very simple very quick and easy attach detach and I'm not having to worry about dragging this thing over my head if it catches on anything if I'm bending over and it gets caught on something it's gonna come apart because it's, it's got that you know a whopping of three pound holding power it's not gonna hurt the heck out of my neck if if it uh, comes apart and then it, therefore it just it comes apart rather than breaking um, so that's that's how I like my setup with uh, with my neck knives, with these type of necklaces, lanyards for my for my neck knives. So let's move the CRKT minimalist out of the way. Uh, as much as I love him, as fantastic as I think that he is, I did decided that uh, it, it's nice to change things up a little bit with anything, knives, uh, all kinds of tools, gear, what have you. So. Um, so I thought maybe uh, something that had a little more tactical uh, feel to it, look to it, and and just something different. And so on Blade HQ, that's who I got it from, a uh, company called Real Steel. Uh, they have a decent sized light knife lineup already. Uh, excellent uh, knife uh, company. They make some really, really cool knives. And this happens to be their one of their neck knives. Well, I think it's their only neck knife right now. It is called the Black Cat. And I have no idea, no idea where or how or why that name came into, got attached to the design of this uh, knife. But, yeah, that's the name of it, Black Cat. So the Real Steel Black Cat. CRKT minimalist, minimalist being a very small, lightweight neck knife that makes sense to me. But uh, but uh, for real steel, black cat, hmm, love to know the uh, story behind that one. So I just got this guy a handful of days ago in the mail. He was around thirty-one dollars and fifty cents. Is what he was on uh, Blade HQ at the, uh, you know, about a week ago when I bought him. So, you know how prices change on things. Uh, they both come with uh, your Kydex sheets, as you can see. So that's that's kind of nice. And the the real steel uh, also has, it's still the same blade shape for this knife. But it does come with several finish options on the blade. And they actually, uh, give me a second, I'll get to the specs on it. Uh, first off, this is the box it comes in, real cool little box. For, for those that uh, like to DJ, you got that texture feel, real, real nice on the box. And the pad, all this padding here. Uh, one thing that's really neat is that they give you a very nice, high quality polishing cloth to get all my nasty ass fingerprints and gunk uh, off of the blades so that they're nice and clean and dry, you know, when I go to store it or what have you. So, real nice, large, good sized uh, mic micro polishing cloth. So that's pretty sweet. Then you also get a, uh, a little accordion pullout of um, how their regular folders uh, come come apart, all the parts and pieces, and how how, how the folders are built. So an instructional thing uh, if you're buying one of their folders. And then on the other side is your 
their lineup of all their folder knives. So they're encouraging you to buy more and more of their knives. Makes sense marketing wise. I'd probably do the same thing. So that's that. And then they give you kind of a little cheat sheet diagram thing here. Uh, with all the specs to it and the dimensions and, and diagram of, of the uh, knife and the sheath. So we'll go over that real quick. Blade Steel, Steel is the 9CR18MOV, uh, which is a little slight, slight, slight step up from the uh, minimalist uh, 5CR15MOV. Great, excellent budget steels, good hardness, um, sharpening, uh, Easy, fairly easy to sharpen, uh, decent uh, edge retention, and fairly resistant to rust corrosion. So they're good. They're good solid steels for for being in that price point of twenty and thirty dollars, twenty and thirty dollars. So uh, the rest of it uh, handle is your G10. So G10 handle scales and. Uh, Blade thickness, oh, it's it's a little bit thicker. It's it's definitely a little bit thicker than the CRKT Minimalist. I think it is uh, uh, one point something millimeters, where this is uh, three and a half millimeters. So, yeah, def definitely a thicker blade, thicker stock there. So that's that's pretty cool. I might be wrong on that. I don't I don't remember what the what the uh, blade stock thickness is on the on the minimalist, but you can definitely tell a noticeable difference that the uh, real steel is uh, black. Uh, black cat is definitely a thicker, thicker stock, thicker blade. Um, so that's how he's supposed to go in hand. That's you know big big uh, finger hole here, right in the middle of the blade, um, and it's got got your grooves for for. Your thumb and your pointer finger, um, and then your other fingers kind of go around it, and, or your middle finger, pointer finger through the hole. I guess you could you could do that if you don't want to put your pointer finger through the hole. So definitely uh, multiple uh, grip positions, possible grip positions, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, the curve here is really set for your thumb, and it is really nice. To, to, to get your thumb like that if you're making these kind of cuts with this blade with this edge a kind of a, a push scraper uh, angled cut motion cutting motion uh, it works really well in, in putting the handle putting the scale all the way into the palm of your hand like so but if you want to really put it into your palm, deeper into your, you know, further across your palm, right there at the base of your fingers, I kind of, your thumb ends up shifting, wanting to shift from here to there. And I'm debating, please leave in the comments what you think. We'll do a little poll here. Uh, should I do my own jimping on the top right here? Add, you know, five or six notches on the top right here and do my own jimping. Should I do that or should I leave it? Understanding that this uh, black stone wash finish here will then be, you know, changed and have uh, have some shiny uh, grooves there as, as the jimping when I, when I cut into that uh, with the Dremel tool and file. So, should I do it or should I not do it? That is the question. So, because it's a thicker stock, um, your weight is heavier. It is 2.61 ounces for the Black Cat versus the Minimalist uh, 1.1 ounce. So pretty much tw more, a little bit more than twice the weight. So he does have some heft to him. You're still talking about <clears throat> two and a, half, a little over 2.5 ounces, which is not bad. It's really not bad. The, the benefit that you, that you do get is on, on this guy because he's kind of like a, I would say, a modified Tonto uh, style blade with a very, very wide uh, stock to it there. 
let's see if we if we line him up on on the measure measurements wise that uh cutting surface that cutting edge is pretty much one and a half and then you go to the other one and he is I'm gonna start at the two here he is like one and uh a fifth maybe he's just he's a little more than one not quite one and a quarter not quite one and an, no he's just a little over one a little less than one and an eighth just slightly less than one and one eighth uh, of an inch so overall you add those two together one and a half and one and one roughly one and one eighth um, you got over three inches of um, cutting space. Uh, if if I'm doing the math right, I don't know. My brain's fried from the for the day. <laughs> you do the math. One, one and a half and one and one one and one eighth. That's that's two and two and uh, a little more than a half. So so not three inches. Golly. What a day. Um, so, but my point being is is that you definitely get a little bit more cutting edge because you have two cutting edges. Uh, and then that adds some versatility to it. You get two points, therefore you get two points rather than just one point. And then, be, and then you got two different types of cutting angles, which is great for cutting different things in different ways. So lots of more versatility to the uh, real steel black cat because he's got the multiple cutting edges um, and angles and two points rather than just one point so kind of cool uh, I went with the black wa black uh, stone wash finish uh, rather than the uh, they've got two other finishes one is the uh, it's just regular stone wash, and then the other is kind of like a, I don't know if it's bead blasted or if it's just, you know, brush polished, um, you know, standard satin uh, finish. <clears throat> but but you do have three option, options of the blade finish, and I think there's, they offer another color for the G10, um, or two colors, I don't remember. Uh, been a while since I've looked on the on that web, on the website to see, but really cool knife. Uh, Kydex sheath again did the whole lanyard thing change up. Really really nice, and I know he's he's more than twice the weight of uh, of the CRKT minimal, minimalist, but he's a really cool blade, and he is just he's something different, and he's got a lot going for him. Uh, so, and they came, they, he came pretty darn sharp, almost hair shaving sharp. It wanted to take a few hairs off my arm, but, but not very many, not, not quite there. So again, a few passes on a, on a leather strop and, and he'd probably be, he'd be set. But really cool knife. Again, just over $30 for this guy. Um, just a little bit over $20 for the CRKT minimalist. Um, and they both have lots of options. They're great neck knives. Uh, why a neck knife? You know, I know not neck knives are not for everybody, and I don't care to wear one all the time. It's nice to have one as a backup. It's it, it plays a lot of benefits when you're um, when you're around a camp or backpacking, especially because when you get you put your backpack on. Uh, you get all strapped up and everything and and trying to get a pocket a folder out of out of a pocket or even a fixed blade off off of your hip off of your belt um that that can be a real challenge because you have all the straps of, of of your backpack so uh having a neck knife as a as a quick you know dang you know hanging right there in front of you uh, quick access easy easy access uh has its benefits there uh, the other other things is just the fact that you can totally, you know, when you're wearing it, deploy it one-handed, um, 
again, very quickly, very easily. They end up being great defensive blades uh, if you feel that, that you need that. Um, and they're, it's easy to sharpen them. I mean, there's just there's a lot of, there's a lot of good about them. And these guys are great because they're compact and they're lightweight. You don't really notice them quite so much around your neck. Some of your other, some most of your larger neck knives. There's kind of in everybody's own opinion how they feel. But you you get so much bigger, you get so much heavier. Then for most of us, it becomes a bit bit more of a nuisance. Uh, you, f you feel it around your neck weigh weighing you down, um, especially if you have a giraffe neck. I don't, but, but you know some people do have longer necks, weaker necks. So, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's nice to have it as backup. It's nice to have it as a quick go-to blade especially when you're backpacking and even around camp as, as something you know you're not not always don't always necessarily have that folder in your pocket or that fixed blade on your uh, hip so you can always dangle him and then you can clip things you, with the on to and the, on in addition to so you know flashlight uh, keys whatever you can clip onto the lanyard part as well they, it is possible if finding the right ones the right size uh, and attachments uh, for multiple positions, uh, different ways you can hang the knife around your neck, but also to attach some kind of a clip. So you could attach so, uh, some clips to these guys and wear them probably scalp carry on your waist, you know, horizontally like this, like that, uh, rather than clipping them vertically up and down like that, or upright like this. Some everybody has their own preference with that as well so with that said it doesn't hurt to have a neck knife and you know I've, I've only got two of them but they're awesome and I think they're great because for especially for those who don't quite know if they're going to be going to like having a neck knife or wearing a neck knife or how often they're gonna find themselves wearing it uh, whether it's gonna be something they're comfortable with or something that they're not going to care too much for. Uh, again, uh, mine just typically stay in a pack or stay in a car and, and they get used sparingly uh, when I feel like I'm good with, with having it and would like to have it as, as a secondary backup or even some occasionally rare, rare occasions as, as my primary. Uh, just depending on what I'm doing and where I'm going, like with any tool. So, I I can't say anything more about them. I think they're just excellent. They're excellent budget knives. They're excellent lightweight, small, compact neck knives. Um, they got decent, they got pretty solid steel on them for being uh, neck knives. And, and the price point, it's, it's hard to argue. I can't say, I really just cannot say anything negative about either of these. They're just awesome little neck knives. And you don't have to invest a whole lot to, to into owning one of them, or both of them, in my case. So, hope, uh, hope this gave you some extra info, shed some light on some things, got you thinking about neck knives and, on, and, and help you in the decision process of which one to get, or if you want to get one or not get one. Uh, don't forget to leave in the comments what you think about me doing uh, the jumping across the top here. Oh, and one thing that uh, uh, that kind of, uh, if anything, just a nitpicky negative, I kind of wish that this uh, finger choil down here on the lower half just went a little bit further because if you notice I've got a band-aid on my uh, birdie finger there. Um, yeah, he slipped a little bit and I got him. The the black cat bit me. Nasty little black cat. He bit me. So, um, yeah, just be careful when deploying it. Uh, make sure you have a solid, <clears throat> proper finger placements on it and, and a solid grip. And you don't let it slip. Because uh, otherwise, he'll get you. <laughs> so, that's it. I've rant and raved enough about them.
and uh, hope you hope you like the video. Hit like or don't like. Uh, subscribe. Watch some of my other stuff. Uh, still have some more videos coming around soon. I hope. I kind of was sick for, for most of last week, so bear with me. And you know, family, kids, lots of activities, nothing but problems here and there, challenges to face. So you know, it's not my primary job. Uh, plus, I have a job. So I'll get to, I'll get to them when I get to them. Um, and uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching again. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give me some feedback. I love feedback. And have a good one until I see you next time. I'm out.